April and I had talked about, you know, that song and, uh, you know, what I hoped would happen would be that it would be become your prayer. You think about it, you know, draw me near, draw me near. In a sense, physically or spiritually, I don't, there's not a separation. But, you know, in life, it's just like, kind of like Eric prayed, in life there are things that do arise. Um, that do kind of come between that, that intimacy and that relationship. Uh, for me, it's simple. It's become simple. I love simple because I think people want simple, not because they're, they're not smart or because many of you are just intelligent and beyond, you know, just out there uh, as far as what you know and what you can do, and you've just been blessed. But you got to admit that... Uh, Sometimes we lose sight of some things, and we lose sight of the goal. You know, what is the goal? Um, for me, the goal is simple, to walk with the Almighty. That's the goal. I mean, if you want to know one of the things that Jesus did for you that I think is amazing is he opened the door for you to walk with the Almighty. <laughs> you know, because at one time there was sin standing between you and that walk, but the Bible says he, the Lamb of God, came and took away the sins of the world. Amen? He did that. So I, I, I'm here to say, and I'll say this again, and I hope one day you get it because it takes me forever to get things. God does not want you focused on sin. God wants you focused on Him. God wants you to focus on this path, this journey, this purpose, this wonderful plan that He has for you that I believe is so consuming, so all-consuming that we don't have time to mess with that stuff. I really believe that. And so... Man, the goal is walking with the Almighty, and my desire today, my prayer has been that He will use His Word today, that He will use His Word today to renew you and challenge you in that effort. Because think about it, did you walk with the Almighty this week? Or are you here today believing that today is, okay, this is how I walk with God, I go to church, but no, did you walk with God this week? Did you take advantage of what Jesus suffered, what he died, what he bled and died for you to enjoy? Because the scripture clearly says he died so that you would not perish but have everlasting life. He died so that you could enjoy abundant life. The enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus died to open access to you. Yes, you, to the abundant life. He did that. Jesus bled and he died to open the door for you and I to enjoy life's greatest treasure, which is God himself. Are you enjoying that? And I think the things that sometimes the Holy Spirit does want to pinpoint, though, are the things that are in our lives that are causing the chaos. Anybody got any chaos in your life these days? I looked that up, and you know, chaos, it means confusion. And so when I was thinking about chaos, man, I was thinking about different scenarios I, I literally I was thinking about the the time in Vegas when they were having that country concert and there was a guy in a motel or a hotel and he was up there with just more firepower than anybody ever knows and all of a sudden he just starts unloading on that crowd I'm gonna tell you chaos ensued I was also thinking about the time in Hawaii when a guy accidentally hit a button that sent out a warning saying that missiles were headed toward the island. What do you think ensued? Chaos. We have some members of our church who had family there who described that chaos of what went on during that period of time when people thought that there were missiles headed toward the island. Wow. Wow. But how many of you, that's going on in your life right now? I mean, how many of you, man, your life is chaotic. I mean, it's crazy. You're confused. You don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of it's kind of chaotic, right? Well, I want to invite you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. And I want to share with you something that the Lord spoke to me this week. It has been an unbelievable source of encouragement. 
Anybody ever get something on your mind you, you, you feel like you can't get off? Anybody ever get something, man, you just, you, you got something on your mind and it's like just, just, man, it's in there and you're doing everything, can't, you're, you're fighting it, but it's just there and it, it's kind of like, I think about Paul, I think about that idea of the thorn in the flesh and I think thorn in the flesh, I think number one, I've seen those thorns and we're not talking about these little briar bushes that the little blueberries hang, I mean, over there in that culture, we're talking about thorns this long. I mean, we're talking about thorns that, man, you could use to, to do some serious damage on somebody. So I'm thinking pain, and I'm thinking that if there's one stuck in me, I'm thinking a lot of discomfort, okay? So I'm thinking about you get something on your mind, man. It is, it is a source of pain. It is a source of difficulty. It is a source of discomfort, and you're fighting with it, man. And you're just, you know, just things just seem out of control. What's the next step? What do you do? Where do you turn? What's going on? What's going to happen, man? So look at Genesis chapter 1. Now, what I want to say about this is that, you know, you heard a lot of songs about the Holy Spirit, right? I mean, first of all, let me just say this to you. As a believer, the Bible clearly says that you are the temple of God, that you are the place where the Spirit of God dwells. Think about that for a minute. That you have become a host of the presence of the Almighty. Is that not awesome? And God has told us in his word that he will never leave you. That he will never, ever forsake you. He says, the Lord is my helper. What shall I fear? What in the world can man do to me? I read a verse this week. Um, where Jesus was saying, are, are not two sparrows worth, what, a couple copper coins or something as to what it says. He says, but not a single one of them is forgotten by God. In other words, in the world's eyes, a sparrow's not worth a whole lot, but not a single one of them is forgotten by God. And then he turns it towards you and he says, I know every hair on your head. I've got them numbered, is what he says. And right after that, he says, guess what? Don't fear. Because he says, are you not of more value than many sparrows? That's a wonderful truth, is it not? How many of us on a daily basis or a weekly basis just get overcome by fear? How many of us are allowing our lives to be controlled by something that chances are, good chances, never going to happen? Never going to happen. So we were singing about the Holy Spirit, and there's a reason for that. Because the Holy Spirit, church, one of the things, and I want you to hear this, okay? One of the things, I, that's why you, you never hear me use the pulpit, or nobody out there has ever heard me criticize the past, criticize past leadership, criticize the things that have gone on. in the, I, I, I don't do that, because here's the thing, all right? I know that for such a time as this, God has put me in your life. So the question is, why has God put me in your life? I truly believe that one of the reasons God has put me in the life of this congregation is to help build a spiritual people. I know that. I said it the very first message that I ever preached in this place from this pulpit. If we can find it, go back and listen to it because it has been my number one desire, my number one heart, more than growing a huge congregation, more than filling the pews. Ultimately, the desire has been to grow and develop a spiritual people, a, pe a people who truly walk with God and a people who see that they're on a mission field every day of their life to see them engage the world, you know, with good works, engage the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. To empower them literally and equip them to understand that I can make a difference as much as anybody. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that you, you can make a difference as much as anybody on this planet? But to get there, I really believe you got to understand grace, okay? Because Christian life is a lot like a three-legged stool, right? What will happen if you kick a leg out of the three-legged stool? It falls. So to me, the Christian life is like a three-legged stool built on grace, built on faith, and built on the Spirit of God. So if you try to take any of those out, 
it's going to fall flat, right? So that's why, you know, I know the way that I preach grace sometimes. People are like, oh, I don't know about that preacher, man. I don't know, he seems to kind of be missing this part over here. doesn't seem to be taking sin seriously, but you're, you're not hearing me. Because over the last, what, two years, we spent a lot of time talking about the Spirit of God. We've been spending a lot of time talking about the role of the Spirit of God. And the Bible clearly tells us to walk by the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen? I don't know how much more serious you can get about sin than that. And I stand on that. I affirm that, that your calling, your privilege is to live your life by the Spirit. Just like Psalm says, to let your steps be ordered by the Lord. And do you realize that when we stop letting our steps be ordered by the Lord, that's when chaos happens. But here's what I love, man, and this gets me emotional. Because in our chaos, it's just like I think about the story, Mark 4. The disciples are in the boat. Jesus has told them, get in the boat, we're going to the other side. It's even cooler that I've been there than I've been on a boat in the Sea of Galilee. So they said, get on a boat. They're going to the other side. The Bible even says Jesus took a pillow with him. So if he took a pillow with him, what do you think his intentions were? I'm going to get me a nap in, man. But he also knows what's going to happen in this situation. So a storm comes up. And I've heard stories about storms on the Sea of Galilee, you know. And uh, it's very interesting. Take some time to study that. But these men, this storm was so bad that these men were scared for their own lives. It literally says that they thought they were perishing. And guess what Jesus is doing? They think they're going to die. In other words, they don't think they're going to make it. What's he doing? He's asleep on that pillow. Here's what I love, man. Here's what I love. Them boys go over there and they wake Jesus up and they're like, do you not care that we're dying? Isn't that the way we feel when things are difficult? Are we, God, where are you? I'm confused. I don't get it. Aren't you supposed to take this away from us? But here's what happens. They shake him. Jesus, do you not care? And here's my translation. He gets up and here's what he says. I want you boys to see it from my perspective. Whew. No more wind. No more waves. Isn't that awesome? That, yeah, we see it, we look at it, we see it as chaos. It's crazy. We don't know if we're going to make it. But you know how he sees it? It's peaceful. He's not worried one single bit about it. Because I know that everything that he allows in your life is for your good. I'm telling you, if you would believe that statement alone, you could walk out of here as a peaceful person. You could walk out of here at peace. Because you know what, we, when things bad happen, it's like, oh my goodness, I've done something wrong. God's getting me. He's doing this. He's doing that. But let's move on. I, I got, I got, I, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Man, this is so cool. When is the first time the Holy Spirit is mentioned in the Bible? You're looking at it. What are you looking at? You're looking at Genesis 1. Or I don't know, I may not have told you to turn there. But I want you to see something that just blows me away. Because anytime you see something when it's first mentioned, we talked about this last week with Exodus 17. But when something, the first time it shows up, in some traditions, that means, hey, you need to pay attention to it. There's something, something very significant here, okay? So I want you to read with me. You know this. You already know it. But I want you to read with me the first time the Holy Spirit shows up in the Bible. Look at it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But at one time, what, what was the case? The earth was without form. It was void. What does void mean? It was empty. And there was darkness on the face of the deep. In other words, at that time, it was chaotic. It was in a chaotic state. Now notice what else comes. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The Spirit of God was hovering. So this chaotic situation, what I want you to think about with me, where is the Spirit of God? He's right there in the middle of it. So you look at your life, you look at your chaos, you look at the things that you're dealing with right now in your life, 
Where do you think the Spirit of God is? He's right there in the middle of it. Why is he there? Well, what's so cool about Genesis here is that what happens now? The earth is without form, and it's void, it's empty, it's chaotic. But what happens now? God brings order. He establishes order to this chaotic situation. So what I want you to think about is that God has given you as a believer, He's given you the gift of the Holy Spirit. He has sealed you with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The one that He refers to as the helper, as the comforter, as the guide. And we're going to read John 16 in just a moment. But let me just remind you of something. Why is He there? He is there. Why is He there? What does He want to do in the middle of your chaotic situation? He wants to bring order. He wants to bring order. Remember, God's not making your life chaotic. You're making your life chaotic because we allow the enemy to come into those difficult times and to get all of our junk thrown out of order. What's usually the first thing that goes when difficulty happens? Which is the most important thing? What is it? Huh? Your faith. Your relationship with God, right? Because what do we do? When difficulty happens, we think, I got to fix it. I got to figure it out. I got to make this happen, right? Is that the proper order? Is that the way God created it to be? No, he said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He said in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And what? Lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He will what? He will direct your path. But the first thing that happens, and I'm just telling you from experience, things get bad, and we immediately, we take that burden on ourselves, and we say, I've got to fix it. So here's what I really want you to hear today. Because it may not be for you today. It may not be for you tomorrow. This might be for you for a week from now or a month from now. This may be for you to literally take it and give it away to somebody when you get home today. This may be for you, for those of you that work. You're going to meet somebody at some time, at some point in the week. And they're going to need to hear this word, right? They're going to need to know that the Spirit of God is there. And the reason that he is there is because he wants to reestablish order in their life. He wants to lead them back to the priorities. Number one, your walk with God. Number two, your faith in God. Your confident trust that whatever the situation is, all right, he can handle it. He can handle it. Do you realize that the majority of our chaos comes because we cannot control people and we cannot control situations? Let me say that again. A lot of our chaos, you think about this, it exists because we cannot control people nor can we control our situations. And that's never going to change. But I want you to live, though, in hope. I want you to know that there is hope. And the reason there's hope is because God chose to send His Spirit to dwell in you. And He will never leave you, never forsake you. And when things are crazy, the number one top priority for you is to what? It is to open your life to the Spirit. Because what the Spirit is going to do is He is going to communicate to you the heart of your Father. And there's a lot of times, y'all, that we just need to see the situation like God sees it. Do you understand? Because it's difficult. Man, you, you, you just don't understand the phone calls just this week that I have received from some of you in this room, the things that have happened to you, the things that if they were to happen to me would absolutely devastate me. I mean, I look at people and I'm thinking, how in the world are you going to make it? I don't say that. But I am thinking, how are you going to make it through this?
I mean, this is, this is, this is real life of every day. Hey, pastor, got to tell you what's happened, man. But regardless of what level of trial that we find ourselves in, the Holy Spirit of God is there. The Holy Spirit of God is there to guide, empower, and to bring order to that chaotic situation. It's important that we understand that because, again, what are you going to do in response? What are you going to do in response? Because the normal thing is, I got this. I'll get it. I'll get this done. I'll fix it. You see, real quick, look with me at John. and We'll, we'll look at this passage and then we'll, we'll, we'll close. I, I just want to read it to you. and You can go back home and go back through it. But, but listen to this. John chapter 16, I, I want you to go home really today. If you get some time, read through John 14, 15, and 16. It'll just really help you get a glimpse of what Jesus was telling his disciples that the Spirit of God was going to do in their lives. So I'm just going to read this. John 16, verse 5, But now I go away to him who sent me. Jesus is speaking. And none of you ask me where are you going, but because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, because if I do not go away, the helper, who's the helper? Spirit. If I don't go away, the helper will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send him to you. Now listen to these verses. When he has come, he will convict, now notice the phrase, the world, the world, the world of sin. He's going to convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So his ministry primarily here in these verses is to convince. To convince what? To convince the world of sin, to convince of righteousness. It didn't say the world of righteousness, but of righteousness and of judgment. Verse 9, listen to it. Of sin, why? Because they do not believe in me. The world does not believe in him, so why does the Holy Spirit come along and convince them of sin? Because God is not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. And so he wants them to understand the spiritual situation, circumstance that they are in. Because if they don't understand that, they're never going to cry out for the Savior. Right? So the Spirit comes to convince the world of sin because they don't believe in me. And if they get a grasp on really where they're at spiritually, they'll trust the Savior. That's what you did, right? That's what you did. You came to an understanding of your sin and your spiritual plight and what was going to happen to you apart from the Savior, and you chose to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. But it goes further. Of righteousness, because I go to the Father. Now notice the transition of who he's talking to. He goes from speaking about convincing the world of sin. Now he says... Of, of, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. So he goes from speaking about the world to I, my job, the spirit of job, the God's job is going to be to convince you of righteousness. And here's the deal. You are always going to struggle a lot with this issue of righteousness because you're going to think it's going to be about your righteousness that's going to get you the blessing of God. Can I get an Amen. There's some of you here right now, you think that your righteousness is earning you God's acceptance and God's love and God's favor, and one day hopefully will earn you a place in heaven. You think that, but that is not true. So the Holy Spirit has been sent by God to come alongside of believers to constantly convince them that it's not your righteousness, but it's the perfect righteousness of Jesus that guarantees you your home in heaven in relationship with Him. That's it. Because I'm going to tell you, if it's, if it's me, and I don't even have to relate to you, if it's my righteousness, let me tell you, I'm in deep trouble. I'm in deep trouble. But then he says to convince of judgment. So, so the Spirit always wants to take you back to your identity. He always wants to take you back to your source of life. 
But then it goes on to say of judgment. Why is he convincing the world of judgment? He says because the ruler of the world of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. Now listen, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Do you hear that? So what is the Spirit? The Spirit of God, church. Some point, some way, we've got to get back to that reality that the Spirit of God is alive, that He's well. We believe these words, that He's been given to us, and He's there to declare to you the heart of your Father. That's why He's there. You see, He says of judgment, because... One of the things that we will constantly deal with is the idea of believing that more judgment is coming for us. Now, listen, I, I, I know that those who are outside of the safety of Jesus, outside of the ark of Jesus, they will experience the wrath of God. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that that's not true. But I want you to understand is that the Holy Spirit wants to constantly come alongside of you and declare to you over and over again that the ruler of this world has been judged. That the teeth of the enemy have been knocked out. He has no power over you. John 10, it clearly says that Jesus has you in his grip and you will never perish and no one, nothing can snatch you out of his hand, okay? He wants to convince you of judgment because the Bible clearly says that when he was raised up on the cross that he drew all of the judgment of the world into himself. So how tragic is it to know that this is what Jesus did for the world but the world continues to believe that somehow by their own righteousness they're going to be okay in the end. How tragic is it for people to believe that there's still more judgment coming for the people of God? That wrath has been poured out. One of the most beautiful pictures is what, of when Jesus said, hey, it's not my will, it's yours. And he talks about drinking the cup of the wrath of God. Ladies and gentlemen, do you or do you not believe that he drank that cup in his entirety? Discipline is something way different than judgment. Discipline comes from the loving hand of a loving father who sees his children on the wrong path and in a loving way, in a loving compassion, he will try to turn you around and get you back where your priorities are where they need to be. So here's the thing that I closed with this morning. And God has given us a wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. And I am just challenging some of you today God just wants you to open your heart to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and allow Him to bring order to your chaotic situation. Is the church listening? Are you listening? Somebody's got to make that decision today. Is it you? Father, we thank you for the day. Always appreciative to get together with your people. God, just to sing, to pray, to open your precious word, to listen and to hear and to know, Lord, even today as we think about your spirit, as we think about the time when he was first mentioned there, hovering over the chaotic situation that the earth was in, but then what ensued was order. And I believe the Holy Spirit played a huge part in that. I believe the Holy Spirit was there and he was a part of that creative activity of bringing order to chaos. And so God, I just want, I, well, I, not me, but God, you want people to passionately understand that you have given your spirit and that he is there. He is in the middle of their situation. And God, you are inviting them to open up and allow him to bring order to their chaos. To allow him to maybe come into the, to the chaos of the fact that maybe they don't have a relationship with you. And to convince them of their sin and their need for you. Or to, to take a believer who's struggling still thinking that it's of their righteousness that they are made perfect. Or their righteousness that gets them into heaven. Lord, I don't know, but you want to convince them that it's about the righteousness of Jesus. Maybe we're still struggling with judgment. Thinking, God, that it's not been fully paid for. 
But whatever it is, as your word says, your spirit has been sent forth to declare to us what you are saying. So God, may we open our hearts today to your Holy Spirit to allow him to come in and to bring order to our chaos. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together.